Hey bio team. Uh, so you guys have learned that the water potential of a solution is its ability to donate water molecules. Uh, and the AP bio test will ask you to calculate uh, water potential uh, for a given solution. And so the AP bio test will give you a formula that looks like this. And in this formula, uh, the left side, this uh, Greek letter psi here, represents the water potential. And so if you want to calculate the water potential of a solution, uh, you need to know two things first. You need to know uh, the pressure potential of the solution and the solute potential of the solution. So what is the pressure potential and what is the solute potential? Well, uh, for most AP bio examples, the pressure potential uh, will be zero. And that's because most bio examples are, are taking place in natural open containers rather than pressurized or depressurized containers. Uh, meanwhile, the solute potential uh, is a factor of four different variables uh, and it's expressed as negative I CRT. Uh, so what do these stand for? Well, I stands for ionization constant, which sounds really technical, but the ionization constant of a solution is just the number of particles uh, that its solute dissolves into. So to give you an example here, uh, sugar molecules would have an I value of 1 because when sugar molecules dissolve, uh, they don't break apart into separate ions. Whereas uh, table salt, sodium chloride, would have an I value of 2 because uh, sodium and chlorine dissolve into two separate particles, a uh, positive sodium ion and a negative chlorine ion. Uh, magnesium chloride, meanwhile, if you had a magnesium chloride solution, uh, this would have an I value of 3 because magnesium chloride dissolves into three separate particles, uh, one positive magnesium cation and two negative chlorine anions. So that's what the I value stands for in the solute potential. Uh, the C, meanwhile, stands for the concentration of the solute. That's uh, the moles per liter. Uh, R stands for a constant, which uh, for the AP bio test will always be 0 0.0831. And then the T stands for temperature in Kelvin. Uh, and so to calculate the temperature in Kelvin, you take uh, whatever the temperature was in Celsius and you add 273 to it. Uh, so what does this look like in practice? Let's say we have a question that says the molar concentration of a sodium chloride solution in an open beaker is uh, 0.2 molarity. Uh, what would be the water potential of this solution at 25 degrees Celsius? Well, if I were an AP Bio student looking to solve this problem, the first thing I would do is I would find the water potential formulas uh, on the AP Bio test. So this will be near the front of the exam. So I would look through here and I'd remind myself that if I want to know the water potential of something, I need to know two separate things. I need to know uh, the pressure potential and the solute potential. Uh, so to find these things, uh, I could keep reading actually, and the AP bio test will tell me that the pressure potential in an open container is equal to zero. And so I could sub in right now for pressure potential just zero. And so all I need to find now is the solute potential. And so then I'd continue down here and I'd see that uh, the solute potential of the solution uh, is equal again to uh, four separate factors. Solute potential is equal to uh, negative I uh, CRT. So if I want to find the solute potential, I need to find these four separate things. So let's start with the I value. The I again is the ionization constant, which is just equal to the number of particles that a solute breaks into when it dissolves. So in this case, we have an NaCl solution. And since NaCl would dissolve into two separate particles, the I value for sodium chloride would be two. And so we could sub that in here. So now instead of negative I, we have negative 2. Then we'd carry on and we'd see that C stands for the molar concentration. Uh, and in our problem, uh, the molar concentration is 0.2. So we could plug that in. Uh, then we could keep going uh, and we could see that the R value in this equation will always be the same. It will be equal to 0.0831. It's a constant. So we could plug that in. And then last, uh, T would stand for the temperature uh, in Kelvin. So in this case, because our temperature was 25 degrees Celsius, uh, we can add 273 to it, uh, and our temperature in Kelvin would be 298. And so at this point, 
uh, we have all of the information that we would need uh, to calculate the solute potential and then in turn calculate the water potential. And so if we were to crunch all of these numbers into our calculator, we would find that uh, the water potential would end up being equal to negative 9.9. Uh, and this checks out. Uh, the water potential under most conditions should generally be negative. Uh, the one exception to this would be pure water, uh, which would have a water potential of zero. And that's it. At this point, you guys have some practice problems. Uh, we'll see you next class.